All right, we're here. We've talked about it a lot, training a machine learning model, but now we're actually gonna do it. So you've prepared your data. It's now a giant table of all numbers. You have your features, the things you think would be helpful in helping you make a prediction, and you have a target, the thing you're trying to predict. We're gonna upload that data and we're gonna train some models. So first, a word of warning. We've talked a lot about the dangers of algorithms and how a lot of those dangers uh, come about from people not understanding unintended consequences. So I'd like to uh, share with you this, this um, graphic from Drew Conway about what it is that makes something data science, right? So we have these overlapping uh, areas of expertise and we are entering the danger zone, okay? So um, we've given you just enough information to be dangerous. And what that is, is, is to say that you can put things in models, but uh, you want to be very sure that you don't jump to conclusions about what those things mean. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit as we go down uh, through this notebook here. Um, we're using the training notebook that you should be able to find in your Python Anywhere um, account. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull in uh, the data you have uh, that we prepared together in regards to the um, predictor for um, school closings. So you'll remember in our um, last exercise, we went ahead and we looked at some data I pulled together that came from closures at Suffolk due to inclement weather. Uh, there was weather data uh, for all the days uh, in the several year, over several years, and then whether or not school was closed on certain days. So we're gonna do some stuff that looks familiar. We're gonna load the, the pandas library. So I'm just gonna run that cell there. Um, and this is the, again, this is the data that we cleaned in the previous level. So at the end of that level, we exported a CSV file and that was the process table only numbers file. And so that's now in the, in the same directory as this um, notebook. And we're just gonna read that in and we're gonna put it, we're gonna use a, this pandas read CSV and we're gonna take the output of, of that reading of the CSV and put it into a variable we call processed table. And then we're gonna look at the head, the top of that table. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, and this should look familiar. This is the, this is the table we created in level six. You can see we have the accumulation, of a precipitation, the minimum and maximum temperatures, the wind, yesterday's high, and uh, whether or not school was closed. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about doing a linear regression. We've read about this a lot. We read about it in the big bias and big data piece. Um, you've seen it in how not to be wrong. Um, and as we talked about before, linear regressions are very often uh, a model that's underlying a lot of social science that you hear. So when you hear, you know, smoking takes five years off your life, you wonder where the five years come from, um, or, or five minutes off your life for every cigarette or whatever the number happens to be. Where'd that number come from? Uh, you probably came from some type of regression. And so what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna deal just with the features that we think are gonna be relevant. And um, what we're gonna do is we, we wanna keep it very simple. Um, we saw in the big bias and big uh, data article that you can do a linear regression over many variables. We just wanna deal with um, our one feature and one target, well, we have target and one feature. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the, we're just going to get rid of everything in our table except for the maximum temperature and yesterday's high. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like, well, we're not going to pretend like, we're going to make them today's maximum temperature. That'll be the thing we're trying to predict. And we're going to be predicting it based upon yesterday's high. So we're, we're making a forecast. If I know a day's uh, high temperature, I'm going to try to predict it. The subsequent day's high temperature, and that's what the model we're going to create does. So we're going to create this new variable, uh, LinDF for, uh, for linear regression and data frame, and we're going to create it from that process table that we loaded in, um, and we're going to just have those two columns, that max and yesterday. We're going to do a copy. Um, you remember we do that so that we don't edit the uh, underlying data frame when we start to do stuff on it. So I'm going to go ahead and create that new data frame, which is just these two columns. As we've talked about, you could use more features this, in this in reality. We saw doing this in multiple dimensions in the uh, big bias and big data article. 
um, you can, uh, we're gonna start simple. Um, something we've talked about before, but we've never done is this idea of creating a holdout and training data, right? So here actually is a little bit, uh, a line where we're gonna create a new variable called uh, underscore holdout. And we're gonna use this sample uh, tool here and sample is gonna take this fraction, so 0.2, so 20%. So it's gonna just sample from the Lendia, from our linear data frame. We're gonna sample 20% of that and we're gonna throw it into this variable, we're gonna hold out. That's gonna be our holdout data. That's the data we're gonna set aside and we're gonna come back and use later. Uh, then we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna create this Lend training data. And this code here, what this is doing is saying basically take everything that's in the, the LinDF, aside from those things uh, we held out. So it's basically saying, yeah, we took out 20%. Okay, now the remaining 80%, I take that and throw that in this thing we call training. And then we're just gonna print out the size of the training data. Okay, so there are 588 uh, uh, entries in the training data. Um, that would sort of make more sense if at some point we actually said how many things there were uh, in general, let's just see real quick. Let's print out the size of uh, data. Um, we, of course, could very easily figure that out since we know we took out 20%. Um, but there you see that we started off with 735 uh, rows and we took out uh, a set of rows and then what remained was these 588. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to load some libraries. Uh, these libraries can help us visualize what we're doing and do some of the processes. And then what I'm going to do is, this is another library here to load. I could probably move that up into that cell. But um, I'm going to create a variable called model. I'm going to use this thing called OLS. It's ordinary least squares. That's the method that's going to be used for making the regression. So that's the, the method we're going to use to get that best fit line to find in the right spot. And we just actually just sort of write out the relationship we're looking for. We're looking for the thing we're trying to predict, max. And instead of writing an equal sign, we're gonna use this tilde here. And then we actually could just write the, if we had multiple variables, we just put them in here as a function. And so we're gonna have yesterday's high. And then we're gonna feed it in the data that we want it to train on, which is this training data, the stuff that isn't the holdout data. And we're gonna use this fit method that's gonna go ahead and do that fit for the best fit line. And it'll, throw all the information about the regression into, um, into, this, uh, into this model variable. And then I have here, I have a, I think it's going to let me plot um, the stuff from the, the, from the training table. And it's going to make a scatter plot. And then this part actually here, this AB line plot is going to actually put in the best fit line from our calculations above. So if I just go ahead and run this, I can see here is yesterday's high uh, and today's maximum. And I can see they're very strongly correlated, which is to say that if you know what the temperature, the maximum temperature was yesterday, you have a pretty good guess of what the maximum temperature is uh, today. Um, I like using this stats model uh, library because it has some really nice tools to summarize things. So I can actually just do this model summary and it will tell me all about um, some some things about how well the model is behaving. You'll remember we discussed uh, in some of the reading, we discussed R squared, which is a measure of how well our uh, regression is doing of fitting that. Remember, an R squared of one would be if all the dots fell upon the line. And um, that would mean that the best fit line uh, basically accounts for 100% of the variation between all of the different data points. Here, obviously, it's not doing that. It's accounting for about 70% of the variation, which is which is pretty good just for one feature to predict another thing. So you can predict the weather pretty well there just by knowing, or you can predict the temperature just by knowing yesterday's temperature. Um, it turns out you can also get pretty good at this if you add other things like the temperature 365 days prior. Um, and that gives you something about the seasonal variation, right? So the idea that there are seasonal differences. Um, there are other things you can put in there. You can get a, a better predictive model. You can get that R score up um, if you if you went ahead and played with it some more. Um, but let's go ahead and check this. We haven't checked this model against our holdout data. We can do that. I'm going to just jump over to another set of libraries um, because these make it pretty easy to do that. And just to show you that there are multiple ways 
to do the same thing. And I don't want you to get bogged down. Actually, the, the linear regression model is not something you're going to have to play with at all. Um, we're just going to walk through it. Um, it's the classifiers below that you're going to get your hands dirty on um, when, uh, when you're working at things. Um, I wish I had said that earlier. Um, maybe I'll write a little note um, in the description. Um, so we're, we're down here. We're going to pull in some other libraries, the scikit-learn libraries. Uh, and these are uh, some great libraries over at scikit-learn. We're going to do uh, something similar, which is we're going to work with holdout data. Um, so we, we already have the, the training data and the holdout data defined above from what we pulled off the frame. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to split out the difference between the features and the targets, right? So uh, up above, uh, we had the target and we defined it uh, in an equation, right? Yeah, here, so the Y was basically, it was it correlated with the, um, the X, which is the max and the high. And here we're just going to take those features and we're going to just create a, basically a matrix of those features and of those uh, training, have that training data. Um, so these are the features and the target for the training. And here's the features and the target for the test, which you'll see is also our holdout data. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna run the a linear regression again. Now we're using the scikit-learn version. And uh, you'll see it uses that same sort of fit language, slightly different syntax here. And instead of writing out the equation of the relationship between the uh, values, we feed it the, um, features and the target, and then it's going to do the same thing. And so we can print out, uh, this doesn't have this quite a robust, nice feature to print out stuff about uh, the model, but we can print out the R squared. So we'll print that out. And then here's the cool part. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use this predict um, tool. And that predict tool means if I just give it the features from the test, it's the, not including the targets, not including the labels, um, it'll make a prediction. And then I can feed that prediction in and uh, I can pair it with the chart with the actual labels. And I can see how well did the actual uh, labels do compared to the predictions or how the predictions do compared to the actual labels. And it'll give me a, a variance score, which is basically the equivalent sort of thing about the R squared is gonna tell me how much of the the variation is the prediction accounting for. But now it's using the prediction that was trained on data that was not the data that it's seeing. So here this is saying, oh, I can do a best fit line. And uh, you know, 70% of this variation is described by that line. Here what I'm doing is I'm taking that line and now I'm, I'm using it on data that was not used to train the line. And I'm seeing if it describes a similar uh, variation. And if I do this, I get that. And look, I see here, this R squared. You'll recognize that. It's the same value I got up here. So the, both of these different uh, packages agree on the R squared of, uh, of ordinary least squared regression. And then you'll see here is this variance score from when I was feeding it the predictions and the target data. And you see those are pretty close. Um, so that makes me feel good that we didn't just have some weird draw um, of data when we were training the, the regression. Um, and that's that's our linear regression bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive in uh, to the classifiers. Okay, um, and we'll do that right below. Uh, 